Hi, I'm Christine. Thanks for joining me. I did a video a few years ago called How to Be a Bright Winter, Not a True Winter. Today we're looking at How to Be a Dark Winter, Not a True Winter. Dark Winter describes the natural coloring of people who are mostly winter in their color properties with a little bit of autumn. So they're a blend of warm and cool colors and therefore called a neutral season. If dark winter describes the colors in you, when you wear those colors, you feel this really good sense of congruence between you and what you wear. You feel confident in your choices and you feel confident in how you are investing in and growing your wardrobe. Everyone has a version of every color. And if the purple in you is deep, rich eggplant, well, it's not going to look quite as good as it could if you're going to wear forget-me-not purple. That would look better on somebody else. For some people, white is snow. For other people, white is beige. And the best thing they can do for their wardrobe is to remove anything that's white. So forget-me-not purple and eggplant wouldn't exist together in the same person. All the colors in a single person are harmonious. That means that their color properties have the same settings, whatever the color family. Always three sets of color dimensions. How warm or cool is it? How light or dark is the range that every color fits in? And how bright or soft are the colors? If all the colors in you have a certain warmth level, all the colors in me have a different warmth level. Well, you could go stand over by that wall and I could go stand over by this wall. And then if we have a group of people and we start dividing them apart based on the other color properties, it's like playing 3D chess. Well, you'd have, you could divide the people. Some people go stand over there and some people go stand over there. Well, you could divide them endlessly, but at some point it becomes very blurry and the system is too overlapping and too complicated to use. The system that I use is called SciArt. There are 12 groups and they're called Seasons. All 12 groups have a place around this table with the true seasons, the ones that are not a blend of warm and cool, in the four corners, and then the neutral seasons in between. So today we're looking at dark and true winter. Well, for sure you're going to find very similar colors in these two groups because they share so much in their color properties. They're both quite bright, they both become quite dark, and they are both cooler than they are warm, or for true winter, entirely cool. And that's the challenge that folks have, is how to make the two of them look unique. That little bit of autumn in dark winter definitely has a voice. And so today we're looking at how do you make that voice be heard? Well, they're different enough that if you took one of those near identical looking colors in the two color palettes and switched them, you'd start to notice they're not quite so identical after all. Or if you put them underneath a true or a dark winter face, all of a sudden the dark winter person wearing true winter colors starts looking a little tired. They look a little bit drained. The rest of their outfit, all the parts don't go together as well. Some parts look faded, some parts look too bright. And so today we're going to be looking at that. The easiest way to separate autumn and winter is going to be based on their color properties. Well, what's the most obvious one? Autumn is warmer and dark winter is still winter, still more cool than warm, but it is warmer than true winter. More obvious in some colors than others probably. Like here in the purse, you can see that the red is warmer than the blouse over on the true winter side. That's more of a cool cherry red kind of color. If someone said to you about that purse, do you think that looks like salsa or jelly bean red? I'd say salsa. There is something a little earthy about autumn color because it's not only warmer but it's softer and um, the warmth is gold compared with a brighter daffodil yellow that is the kind of warmth you'll see in spring and so that soft warm autumn feeling I always think of the feeling as a little bit log cabin and I think I can see it in that purse it has a smoky kind of appearance to it. The second color property to take advantage of is going to be that autumn is softer than winter. Dark winter is softer than true winter, meaning a little bit more gray, a little more smoky, a little more heathered or dusty relative to true winter, brighter, clearer, more pigment. 
looking at the yellows. Well, everybody has yellow in their pigmentation. True winter would be more like um, lemon zest. Dark winter, it's a little more golden, a little more harvest. Makes me think of some variety of corn. The yellow scarf and the red bag, I think they look rich together. One isn't dominating or detracting from the other. They balance pretty well. Although yellow is a color that we normally see as bright, it normally jumps forward in our awareness. But between the purse and the scarf, I can look at both of them at the same time without feeling like my gaze is jumping to one or the other. The blue true winter top at the bottom with the scarf points for trying, but I think that that scarf loses a little bit of richness. Would you agree? It, it looks a little more floppy. It's just not sitting up and holding its own relative to the blouse. The next difference isn't a difference, it's what they have in common, which is that both autumn and winter go to a dark end point. Therefore, their children's seasons, like dark winter and dark autumn, go to a fairly dark end point. Doesn't mean the person's dark, doesn't mean they only wear dark. It means that even the light colors are fairly dark relative to the other uh, seasons. And so you can see here the blue and the red, for example, darker in dark winter than in true winter. Maybe you already know that you're a dark winter and you're wondering, am I gonna have to own a dark winter and a true winter palette to be able to figure out my colors? You don't have to, many people don't, but I think having a comparison allows you to decide for sure which one is better than, and so I think that it's a good idea to have both, like knowing where the property line is, you know where to plant your trees and where to stop mowing your lawn. This is kind of the same thing, and I want you to know about every resource I know, and so, NDU Colors in uh, the United States, global shipping, beautiful product. I've shown you the little wallet card palettes and the little mini palettes. I think we saw that in the Your Best Purple video. Well, today I wanna to show you these posters. They come in different sizes, useful, because you can lay them on clothing and just get a flyover idea of whether the clothes are gonna work with the palette or not and you can pull jewelry around on them. You'll see stones at gain or lose shine. You'll see metal gain or lose shine. You'll see pieces that just, they do nothing for the colors that they're lying on. That poster, I mean, that's your face, right? That is all the colors in your face without the distracting elements of shape and size and emotion and psychology. <laughs> it's just the colors in your face. And when you uh, look either jewelry or with clothing or with makeup, draw makeup on, say, give yourself about a one square inch on the end of a piece of card. Don't do some little tiny squiggle. A good square inch of color, even if it's eyeliner, even if it's mascara, is works just fine. And then pass this little piece of card over the poster. Would these colors work well together? Would you put this lipstick on that face? And when you do it, Make sure you look at all the colors because nobody's looking at your lipstick with only the reds in you. Nobody's looking at this sweater with only the blacks in me. We Others see what we wear relative to every color in us. So maybe you're passing this lipstick over the dark winter colors and thinking, yeah, you know, that's okay. I can see some similar colors in there. That would probably be a good match. Now look at all the other colors. Does it work with the neutrals? Does it kind of fall apart over the greens? Does it become too pink over the blues? Look at all the colors. Let's look a bit more at examples of apparel, looking at the color properties. Warmth is a good one, but they're a combination of the three, as we said. And so what we're going to think about is what are the colors in dark winter that just would not appear or have no counterpart in true winter? We're going to start with red. And the red shirt from the previous panel is on the left, along with a fuchsia dress. Those are gonna be our true winter reference points. And then in the either group, well, I could imagine either season wearing those. The top item, the brightness increases. Well, maybe this is where dark winter ends and true winter begins. Maybe it's the lightest of the reds for dark winter. Well, what about bright winter? Like you might think I could see a color just like that in my bright winter palette. Yeah, of all the reds at the store, there would be worse colors that a dark, a bright winter could choose, but I was getting this log cabin weight from that. I was not really getting Christmas candy, which is a kind of bright winter sensation. It might be just the textile. 
And then the dress at the bottom. I would not be confused if a true winter walked in wearing that. The tapestry effect will look terrific on a dark winter and the effect is overall dark, but it's not so extreme that the right true winter couldn't wear it really well. And then under dark winter now, rust and dark coral don't appear in true winter. That wallet, that's interesting because it's an example that everything doesn't have to be dark. And the white textured background, that texture softens the white a little bit. And that autumn likes that. Autumn will agree with that and pull it into dark winter better than true winter. It's not snow as a true winter would have. The warm red in the poppies, maybe that's as light as dark winter red would be, but I appreciate this personal and original touch. The um, necktie, that's a ruby color. Softer than bright red ruby like you see over it on the true winter uh, side. And then the dots are gray, softens the effect a little bit more for autumn, as opposed to if they were a very sharp white, might still work for dark winter. They are winters and they do wear white, but it would have a more mm, dot matrix kind of effect and the gray I like because it allows the red to have more richness. You see dark coral in the v-neck top and the bracelet could call those redwood, meaning dark autumn could wear them too, but the amount of pigment is quite high. There will be very similar colors in dark winter and dark autumn and we'll talk about that, but the amount of pigment in dark winter is going to be higher. V-neck top in the lower row, bluer. Definitely a color that could fit into dark autumn, but those white dots wouldn't. Pure white, that, that would be the one color that dark autumn should just clean it out. It, it doesn't work in prints. It just never really flatters the person or what they're wearing. Burgundy maroon type colors, they're particular to autumn influenced seasons. True Winter has a more purple version. It's brighter. You can see it in the dress over on the far side and that reflection that's a very cool fuchsia that'd be very cool for dark winter if you're into five thousand dollar watches and i totally could be <laughs> the silver and diamonds makes a nice uh, warm cool contrast with gold and the coral in the watch face which is an effect neutral seasons wear well you're warm and cool we're warm and cool it looks good people understand what you're doing you see the bracelet above and the watch below, how in the bracelet the gold is a kind of red-orange and in the watch the gold is a kind of green-yellow. be quite honest, I like the red-orange better for dark winter. The yellow-green somehow looks a little acidic. It might depend on the piece, I think. And maybe a bright spring could also wear that yellow-green-gold, but with the color of the watch face, that dark coral, I really don't know who but a dark season is going to wear this watch. Now we're looking at green. Green on the true winter side. I don't get candy from those colors. Candy is one of my spring <laughs> um, associations in terms of brightness. And I also don't get log cabin or harvest. They're just like straight up green. I often think of the true seasons as they speak one language. You don't have the color influence from the second group. So it's like you hear one voice, you hear one language and it doesn't have an accent. In the bags at the top, still on True Winter, we have two sides of True Winter Green, one with more visible yellow and one more traditional blue-green. You need yellow to make green. So the question is not, is there yellow or yellow is automatic warm? It isn't. The question is, which yellow went into making the green? The brightness of these two bags, meaning the amount of pigment concentration, it's about the same, whereas if you look on the Dark Winter side, Colors are a little bit softer looking and they're darker. Dark, darkness being a separate scale from brightness. They don't do the same thing or move in the same way um, necessarily. And warmer on dark winter, separate scale again. You gotta know what's happening on all three levels. The dress and the tank top at the bottom of the true winter column. The difference might be in the texture of the fabric, the reflectivity, which is fair. Texture and reflectivity affect how we see color. I could get along with the tank top working with the dark winter colors, I think. But once you get into shiny fabric and reflections that get so close to white, I would have trouble picturing that dress on the dark winter side. You couldn't just slide it in there and nobody notice. In the either group, down the middle, 
medium dark green silver bracelet. I think they'd get along with both, both sides. The pieces are small, doesn't matter exactly which season they fit into. This is where you can take advantage of the similar color properties. Plaid coat, maybe that's a cool green, but a matte woven textile, softens color, autumn likes that. Plaid also turns up the volume for autumn. Sleeveless blouse at the bottom. And again, that's that language that I think can be understood pretty well on both sides. Then over on the dark winter side, are those colors smoky or sunny or neither? Sunny being spring. I think they're smoky, meaning dark and muted. You may have a word that you prefer. The true winter colors are neither one. And so it's harder to apply those nuanced adjectives. Once you have two seasons together, it's a lot easier. The bag at the top, dark green, would you say between forest and olive? With suede to soften the color for autumn. Then it, there's this flower print, gives it some texture. Texture is a very good autumn effect because it softens color. Sleeveless top, smooth, shiny. But the reflected, the reflected light is darker than the true winter dress. Let's say that softer too than the true winter dress. It's not so near to sharp white. Forest green coat, nice. Rich green, wooden toggle buttons, Autumn likes that. Could that coat hang in a log cabin? Absolutely. Could you picture it in an igloo? Not so much. <laughs> Earrings, mix of brighter and softer colors. Tones down the overall brightness, along with texture in the silver. The dark olive skirt and the wallet combine leather's ability to hold rich color, to be durable. Autumn can work with both of those associations really well, and it creates shine in a lower key, a little grayer than for true winter. In this panel, we're going to look at colors that are either so typical of winter that you don't have to be particularly careful with them, or colors that are so not typical of true winter, which we've already seen a little bit in rust and in coral. Sapphire blue. I think of them as flexible for the three winters, same as summer and blue, because they're essentially cool seasons and blue is the coolest color. Also as a color, blue gets darker as it gets brighter and dark winter is pretty happy with, with dark color. They can make it work. White and black could be here too, colors that just get along with winters. Blue across the top, variations of uh, blue in true winter, clear blue, the scarf. And then as we move closer to dark winter, you see the, the wallet in the either group. Darker colors, the yellow is a small area, it's not worn near the face. Who knows whether it's dark or true winter, it's going to be just fine in both. The bag as you move over then into dark winter, that blue bag, well it's greener. Uh, and so autumn warmth, autumn teal is arriving. And it has this metallic finish that I think speaks very well to autumn, who looks good in that kind of shine. It's like a mineral of some kind. And then next come the colors that are more particular to their group. Pink first. Brighter pinks in true winter. And cooler than the coral version in the scarf that you see over in dark winter. And then in the either group, there's that envelope bag with the dark pink fuchsia. That is the nicest color. I really love that color. Little bit of texture in the flap and dark hardware. So dark winter is feeling cooperative. If we look at the brown in true winter, the bell sleeve top, color is very dark. So now they're approaching black with this color. And it's, let's say, more red or purple in the brown. You don't really see orange quite so much. In the either column, the dark brown tank top next to the metallic gray sleeveless top. It's a little greener, which is fine. Still very pigmented, still very dark. And then the bottom items in dark winter, the browns, they're made of suede or materials that are softer. The effect is less intense. The gray sleeveless top is an example. Seems like a lot of winters could wear that, maybe any winter depending on the outfit. Leather skirt, so in the either group, there's that leather skirt. Leather warms up black and it gives that a little bit of an autumn quality, strong natural material. 
Also the grommets around the hem, they speak of autumn strength and durability. I like white, red, and black on winters. I think it looks good. And in this design, the mirror image symmetry, that appeals to me on any winter. Don't necessarily like high mirror finish and things, but I think mirror image symmetry in prints and designs is really good. Dress at the bottom of the either group, Example of basic black and white, if the style suits the person, if the price suits the person, it can be fine and then a springboard for whatever you're going to add to it for any kind of winter. Orange is a kind of brown and in the Your Best Orange video we saw the dark winter version could be coral, like the scarf, could be uh, dark coral, dark close to brown, like the wallet with the golden clasp, dark autumn could wear that very well as well. Looks like a version of rust. That's a very autumn characteristic color. No counterpart in true winter. And the wallet in dark winter with the roses is black and red, which is great. But that warm soft green, it works in the wallet. The problem I think is if, uh, and you don't hold it near the face, what I'm saying is different. Other winters could wear it with the black and red, but next to true and dark winter outfit brightness, those soft greens are gonna look grayer than they are, and then you don't see the wallet as beautiful as it could be. I think prints are a great way to get used to our colors and wear colors we might not wear in large area. And so like the highlighter yellow in the True Winter Racerback tank, great, acidic kind of lemon zest yellow. Floral t-shirt, well the yellow flowers are just too warm for True Winter. The rest of the t-shirt might be okay, but those flowers can be the way that you uh, let that autumn voice come out and be heard. The cuff bracelet, great metallic tapestry effect, metallic for winter and tapestry for autumn. I just would have trouble putting that into the True Winter lineup. You see the dress at the bottom of True Winter? I really like the way the colors go together in that dress. I don't hear an autumn voice. I don't get different influences talking from this dress. I like that the colors make sense together. There's no black. There's so, so much black is worn in winter outfits. And this is a nice print that just upholds that single voice of winter. You might say, well, I would never wear this style of dress. It's fine, we're not talking about style. If somebody gave you a silver bracelet, shiny silver metal, and the blue and pink beads strung along it, well, you might think it was gorgeous. For the next images, we're going to be combining color with other effects that look good in autumn or with autumn colors and adapting them to winter coloring. So the first one is texture. Texture can be a feature of the fabric like lace or wool, or it can be added like embroidery or beading. And texture affects the way color looks and also the, the shape that a garment assumes when you wear it. So it's part of both the color conversation and the style conversation, but today we're talking mostly about color. In terms of color, what does texture do? I'm not gonna say rough, um, deeper, higher texture, velvet, plush. It softens color because it breaks up the light so that there are hills and valleys and you get lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. It creates an overall softening effect in the color of reflected light, which is why depth effects look so good with autumn. We're going to look at those today too. On the true winter side, black and red, straight up versions of the colors. And the lace is a finer gauge than we see in the heavier gauge lace on dark winter. The drama comes from the contrast with the black and the red, the color simplicity, very winter languages, and the texture adds a pretty detail, but it's not really changing the way that we see the colors. We don't have an either column. I think dark winter could wear these. I mean, they're dark reds. Red's a pretty easy language for winter, but the that statement of simplicity, and I don't get an autumn voice here, makes them particularly good probably for true winter. On the dark winter side, now it's a combined effect. Two seasons are talking to us. So the beading in the bag, the sequin sweater, they, those effects are adding depth, the height from the surface, and it's a muted shine. Let's call it a duller shine. It's a quieter shine. It is not as blue as chrome, and it is also slower than Swarovski crystal. The light does not move across those in a scattered kind of way. It's steadier than that. Heavier gauge lace on dark winter, 
the strength of autumn and also warmer reds. So we're definitely recognizing the earthy side. The shoe classic dark winter burgundy or oxblood, little bit of surface detail, but the effect is jeweled for winter and then the texture slows down the way light moves across it. So it's not exactly the same as the mirror shine of patent leather. Striped sweater, slightly warmer white, but it's not beige, not as pure white as styrofoam. And the gray stripe, well, I think that could look a little dull on true winter. It, it makes me think more of lead or iron than actually stainless steel, like that sleeveless top we saw back in the previous panel, number four. Cropped burgundy sweater, dry shine. It's like a mineral and it's a little bit rough, which helps to soften the color. Adds 3D quality, what we're looking at next. And it maintains the jewel tone of a winter color. 3D is like the next level of texture. It's a great autumn effect because the low angle of light coming in at the autumn time of year gives shapes a rounded appearance like you could see behind them as opposed to spring light where things look flatter and you have an impression you can see through them. So you can add 3D in fabrics and you can add layers in outfits. Those are ways of adding 3D. But one place where I think it just looks terrific is with jewelry or accessories. So we're going to talk more about the color of metals in a bit, but I wanted to separate the idea of the color of metal from texture. In the true winter lineup, you see the blue drop earrings, very smooth, the color's bright, there's not a lot of detail, the colors don't need it. That simplicity, really very good for true winter. Bracelet, overall quite light in color and, and metal. Edges are sharp, it looks like teeth, and the looks a bit like shards of ice. That's what that reminds me of, just coming up, you know, through the water. Somehow a bit extreme for dark winter. I don't see any autumn energy in that item, or spring either. Crisp, sharp, cool, straight up winter on the rocks. Black drop earrings are similar. There's no extra colors. And it looks really good next to the skin. I like that diagonal detail. Again, clean and not excessive. All black outfits, Honestly, they just say nothing to me. They, they're, it's very monotone. And because they're worn so often, I guess they're even more monotone. Contrast is incredibly powerful to give black some kind of meaning. Doesn't have to be a lot of it. It just sharpens up the black so much. Dark Winter could wear those earrings as well as the beaded bracelet as the final item. But I think I would find them a little more interesting on a true winter. Over to the dark winter side, that silver ring, rough texture, raised design around the edges. So there's height in the entire piece. I think there's something nature inspired about the mineral as well, or the colored part. Like it's how you would do bark with metal or with gemstone. And uh, I think the plus the color overall is fairly dark. The black mamba bracelet combines a print textured snake skin theme with warmer versions of yellow. So both of those are talking to autumn, but there's this visible light to dark contrast in silver for winter. The black resin drop earrings, they have darkness, they have mystery of winter. I think that color would look very nice next to dark winter skin. Also, there's a bit of an Adams family theme here. It's not industrial, but it's, it's a different kind of strength and durability. You could picture the fishnets and the velvet and the gloves and the leather. Any winter could wear these, and I think that these 3D effects can also look great on people of other seasons, but it seems to me that on dark winter, these items would look the most expensive and they'd make the most sense and the le look the least costume. The flower ring is next. Has a ruby and diamond theme going on, great. Winter's happy, there's some depth here, but it's not like a swimming pool on a sunny day kind of depth. It's a dangerous depth. It's a little bit of a poisonous depth. And that's an effect winter communicates pretty well. Fragrance might not be overly sweet from this flower. You wouldn't expect to be burned. That's a dark autumn effect, different kind of danger. The blue drop earrings, I like the black and silver rings. They look like the rings of a planet, a Wi-Fi symbol, something abstract that tends to feel winter. 
analogies for timelessness or realms where time has less meaning. Those are very winter effects. That's why they call it timeless and ageless and eternal and so on. Or at least that's why I think they call it that. Black anchors the whole piece. Diamond is a fine neutral, com gives the contrast with black, um, substitute for white. And then the soft and bright blue. Dark winter could make those two look different and it softens the overall effect and it adds a bit more detail than the simplicity of the items that we see in true winter. The bracelet, dark metal, the 3D comes in with the weight and the thickness of the item, a little bit goth and a little bit medieval and I think a dark autumn could wear it just fine as well. Now we're looking at autumn themes with winter contrast levels. These examples are all dark winter. Autumn themes, well, could be fabric with more density, opacity, warmth, for example, heavier gauge knits, twill, flannel, wool. Also, as we look around, we see a ribbed knit in blue, the blue polo sweater. We see animal print, faux fur, velvet, plush. So they're all adding texture to winter colors, buckles, toggles, chains, also autumn inspired motifs. Really great question was asked about, would a winter wear flannel and corduroy? It, you know, these days you can uh, create any kind of color saturation in any kind of fabric that you want, but not just with saturation. The other issue is how is light reflecting from this fabric? And so I've definitely seen great looking dark winter colored flannel, it, but it's always um, a casual outfit, let's say. You can never achieve that sharp, expensive, luxurious kind of reflectivity that you can from smoother textiles. It always creates a very soft, muted kind of diffusion of light that um, just barely, let's say, meets the winter level. And anything you're going to pair with it is also going to be something you'd maybe wear on a casual day. Corduroy, I find, is a really good bridge between autumn and winter. You can saturate it really high. You would use a fine whale corduroy because the thicker the whale, the more muted and the more textures coming into it, you're losing that winter smooth jewel tone effect. But I've certainly seen it in fine whale corduroy in caviar colors, oxblood, really rich greens and golds, and they can look beautiful, more like velvet almost than corduroy. You can wear them with more expensive or smooth or saturated types of textiles and I think they can look absolutely great on dark winter. Contrast is a central theme for winter. Contrast just means big distance between two properties of color. So it could be how light and how dark, doesn't have to be black and white, it could be icy color and black. Or it could be, as in the cardigan here for example, you've got white, black, red, but an autumn type of print in the big cat design. In the bathing suit, again, we have an animal print, it's kind of an autumn thing, but using bright color and a neutral, fuchsia and black. In the next row down, we have a white or an icy gray hat. Creates a really nice contrast with the natural hair color, which is most often medium dark to dark neutral brown, could be other colors. Scarf, chunky knit, 3D warmth in black, white, red, so that's a pretty typical winter trio. And then there's a snowflake print, so that's making an easy connection with winter. The chunky yarn for autumn could be replaced with something smoother like merino wool, but on the right body type, I think that chunky type of wool with winter designs and or colors is terrific. Contrast doesn't have to be all the way from white to black. The dress combines softer contrast, it's a light gray to black range that acknowledges autumn and that autumn is not a fully white to black season or group of colors. Plus there's texture, plus there's tapestry effect here. Plaid is an autumn classic. It creates 3D by near far effect and totally reminds me of a log cabin because that, those um, logs of wood that intersect at right angles, that just looks to me like the way a log house would look. But in dark winter colors, easily enough autumn there in dark winter to translate the colors into plaid. We see the scarf in the lower left in Christmas, green and gold, and then there's a bag with leather and with the classic colors of black and white, but it's appearing in plaid. The two skirts, one is a skort, I think. Folk art has a rustic element to me, at least certain kinds of folk art that bring autumn to mind. And so in these items, paisley, Falling leaves imagery, very congruent with autumn. Colors of red, black, and white for winter on one side. Moderate contrast version on the other with teal and white instead of 
black and white it looks really interesting. The bag at the bottom, fur, chains, uh, industrial kind of metal, tell us about autumn durability. Dark Autumn could carry that bag just fine. And then the sweater with the icy pink beading, the, pig, the beads are actually peachy pink, which is a better version of icy pink for dark winter warmth, not blue pink and a little chunky like seashells. It's not mirrored sequins, it's not little tiny twinkle that I think tends to work better for spring colored people. If we look at the color of metals, look at true winter first. Necklace at the top, neutral colors, very sharp shapes. True winter people don't necessarily only have very sharp shapes, but the way that their coloring reflects light or the type of reflectivity that looks really good on them or next to them is quite sharp. The chain bracelet, well chains are great for autumn, but this is a fairly light silver and it's also almost blue. And so for that reason, I put it over with true winter, not dark winter. The so white it's blue quality is in the watch face as well. That strikes me as true winter. It's the same situation with the silver and black band ring. The textured stone on the ring with the faceted black I could put that into either group because there's a little bit of movement across the surface. It's not quite so smooth and absolute. In the either group, no color warmth. True Winter just doesn't have a shelf to put that on. And so what is being added to True Winter to help uh, assimilate it into Dark Winter is texture. And then we go into Dark Winter. Well, now there's a place to put warmth. It's a great way to bring autumn into winter. Just use the warmth. And so you can have the hallmark colors of autumn like rust and olive for example dark winter colored gemstones in those colors the earrings at the top for example look great with a dark winter that has red rust in the eyes and many of them do and then second using the autumn effect of texture you've got the clover leaf earrings those are dark charcoal not black and they're made of leather so autumn's feeling good and then there's just little bits of gold so you don't have to be too fussy about the color of the gold and then finally if you are dark winter with gold in the eyes and many are this is a typical autumn color gold and it'll appear in the person but it won't appear in the palette i think because there are just more useful colors that will be wearable in larger area or not have to be controlled quite as much gold in a large area could very easily appear too warm or warm up the skin tone too much but like in the earrings here the black diamond shape with that little gold inset it's not going to warm up the skin it's not going to warm up the teeth and it'll acknowledge a winter person with a little bit of gold in the eyes if you've watched enough of these videos you know that i always run up against something where i haven't really decided how i think about it when you do video or when you write or commentary you really got to be clear on what you think about something to communicate it to other people and dark winter and gold I'm never quite sure about that one. So I know that it shouldn't be extreme because Dark Winter is not particularly extreme about anything. And it would not be one of the yellows in the palette because they're just too lemon zest. They're, too, they're a lemon color that wouldn't translate as well to gold. Uh, I do think that the dark coral can translate quite well to gold. And so you could choose a gold that's coming from the red tones in the palette, not so much the yellow tones, sort of, as I said before, I like red orange tones in the gold. So here moving around the rose gold chain drop earrings, middle of the left, I think it's going to be left, uh, dark winter row. I could picture that as a variation of gold. It has some darkness. It has continuity with the corals in the palette. Does not look acidic to me. The hoop earrings in the black background, that can be a nice, softer, cooler version of gold, kind of like the ring in below. No extremes, just medium gold. Silver may be easier to work with for winter in combination with blue tending towards teal in the circular earring, so the teal for autumn, but it's appearing here in metal. Purple stud earrings at the bottom. Maybe something any winter could wear, but if you compare them to similar earrings over on the true winter side, you see that these are a little darker and a little bit more opaque. Good autumn effects. I thought that watch was kind of cool. Like there's a red strap and a definite log cabin feeling in the face. And then the black and white arms, totally something a dark autumn could wear as well. 
I make these videos to include rather than to exclude and there is so much more to all of us than just our colors and our shapes. For sure that's where you start to get your appearance and your closet organized but then there's layer after layer as you probably know if you filled out all the classification systems that you can find online. I don't pretend to know anything about energy systems, but I definitely feel a material kind of association with the seasons. I can feel air in spring. It's buoyant. It lifts. I think autumn colors uh, remind me of wood and fire and earth and all those associations that we know. Summer and water, the colors remind me of that. And then with winter, Mostly I get metal, maybe snow, ice, those types of textiles. So I'm a dark winter myself. You would think that, oh, well, then she would resonate with earth and fire and metal. Nope. <laughs> I, I only can feel air and metal. I have no particular personal reaction to the autumn and the summer types of energies. So just saying you start where you start, get the colors and the shapes and then grow from there. You know, appearance is like a thousand piece puzzle and you want to put in pieces that fit into the puzzle, but everybody's puzzle is going to be a little bit different and that's kind of the fun of it. When it comes to making decisions for myself, my judgment is not so infallible or I'm just not smart enough to not listen to other people. Don't have to do what they say, but I always listen. And once I got my season figured out, I could tell when they were talking to me about me or when they were maybe talking about themselves. Like, that sweater is gorgeous. They didn't say that sweater is gorgeous on you. They separated it from me. So now somehow the sweater's not part of the whole photograph of me. And maybe they're thinking, I actually think it would look really good if I wore it. Or people are talking about everybody. That lipstick looks gorgeous on every skin tone. Uh-huh. Well, then it would be the only item I have ever seen that looks good or equally good on every skin tone. Or when they're talking about their balance sheet, you know, this makes your eyes pop. Please take it home because I got a back room full of inventory that I want to put out. And I mean, that'll drive you crazy if you let it, right? As Dolly Parton said in the song from 9 to 5, I was in my late 40s when I had this done. And it has been my North Star ever since for every single thing that I add to my appearance. At that point, the dreamy, easy beauty of youth was leaving and you can't pretend anymore that it's not, but I didn't care. I had this whole new set of tools that was working so much better for me than any advice I had ever gotten before. And I hope that it does the same for you and you found lots of good information in this video, whatever energy system you align with. I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.